Thursday, November the 27th, and this is already the first Sunday in Advent. Welcome to Felton Viola United Methodist Church. My name is Christine Bowden. I do want to let you know that there will be a lot going on in church this morning, in person, that we really can't do online like this, and ask you to think about please attending church in person this Sunday, either at 8.30 or at 10 o'clock. We'll be lighting the Advent wreath, we'll be talking about the Christmas tree, we'll be putting our memory ornaments on the memory tree. There's a lot happening and a lot of ways to participate and the church is decorated for the season. So if you possibly can, come to church this Sunday morning and I'd be delighted to see you there. But in any case, I'm grateful that you're here, whether you're able to come out or not. This is the first Sunday in Advent and our gospel lesson this morning is um, from Matthew chapter 24. Oh, a couple other things that are happening too. You need this evening at five o'clock, we'll be lighting the first Advent candle outside. So if you come by the church right at about five o'clock, you can hear a little bit of the story, hear a little bit of um, the message, and also hear uh, a few Christmas carols to start the season off right. So that's something that you also want to put on your calendar, five o'clock each Sunday night for the ne this Sunday and then the next three through the, sur <laughs> the season of, of Christmas or of Advent. We will be lighting the Advent wreath outside and we have a living nativity coming up on the 9th and 10th of December. Um, it'll run from seven to eight o'clock. We'll, we'll walk through the story of Jesus' birth. Um, every 20 minutes, there'll be a new, uh, it'll kick off again. So you can come by anytime between seven and eight on the 9th and the 10th of December. So really and truly there is a lot to do and there's a lot going on here to get ready for everything that we're going to be doing this Sunday. As we start Advent, our gospel lesson is from Matthew chapter 24, verses 36 through 44. <clears throat> and this is Jesus' response to a question about when he will return. However, no one knows the day or hour when these things will happen. Not even the angels in heaven or the Son himself. Only the Father knows. When the Son of Man returns, it will be like it was in Noah's day. In those days before the flood, the people were enjoying banquets and parties and weddings right up to the time Noah entered his boat. People didn't realize <clears throat> what was gonna happen until the flood came and swept them all away. This is the way it will be when the Son of Man comes. Two men will be working in the field together <clears throat> one will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding flour at the mill. One will be taken, the other left. So you too must keep watch, for you don't know what day your Lord is coming. Understand this. If a homeowner knew exactly when a burglar was coming, he would keep watch and not permit his house to be broken into. You also must be ready at all times, for the Son of Man will come when least expected. This is the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is also the lectionary reading for the first Sunday in Advent. And when we think of Advent, we generally think of the arrival of the Christ child into the manger at Bethlehem. This gospel message did not have a word about a baby, about Mary and Joseph, about Bethlehem, <clears throat> about any of those things. <clears throat> Excuse me, this cough has not cleared up for a month or more. Anyway, um, doesn't 
say a word about any of those things that we normally associate with Christmas, that we normally associate with Advent, getting ready in all the different ways for the birth of the child. This story also reminds us then that there are more dimensions to the arrival of Christ in the world than that one story of his birth. In this passage, Christ is talking about his return when he will arrive again. Not a word about the baby. He's a full grown man and he's talking about the time that he will return. So when we're celebrating Advent, we are celebrating something that happened in the past when the child was born. And we're also actively looking forward to something that will happen in the future when Christ will come. And then finally, we are experiencing the arrival of Christ into our own lives and into our own hearts. So in this <clears throat> gospel lesson, when Jesus makes these remarks, he's talking about his arrival in the future, in time to come. When he makes these remarks, people have lots of questions, um, not surprisingly. And the most pressing question seems to be, when will this happen? When will this come? When will it be? And the answer is actually very simple. Jesus says, I don't know. And you don't know. And there's no way to know. Only God knows. He goes through some stories and talks about people who didn't know what was coming until it was right on top of them. Um, he talks about Noah and all the people around him, the story about the two workers in the field and the two workers at the mill. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, and the point of these stories is not to answer the question, when will you come? But more to point out that that doesn't matter. And at the end, the answer is still, I don't know. What matters is how you are prepared to respond when I do arrive. Since there's no answer to this question that's available to us at any rate, perhaps the better question might have been, what will happen? And what do we do in the meantime? And who will come? This is what will happen. The Son of Man will return. We have to be careful not to embroider that with too many other <coughs> facts or speculations and ideas and visions and dreams that we might have about what it's going to look like when the Son of Man returns. We do know that the Son of Man will return. That's really all that we know. In our lifetime, in our in our time here on this in this world, um, while we do know that that is a part of our faith. It's not something that we're expecting tomorrow or next week or this Christmas. Um, it's something that's kind of always off in the future. It's yes, it's going to happen, but it's not going to happen in my lifetime. I really don't think so. I can't speak for what the people in Jesus time felt about this. But it seems from what we read that it felt much more immediate to them. It felt much more like it really might be next week or certainly within the year. But in our time, we, we've moved away from that expectation. So we need to remember that the Son of Man will return. Now, Jesus doesn't say the end of the world, and that's the place where we start to speculate about what the end of the world is going to look like. Jesus only says 
the Son of Man will return. And he gives some vivid examples to reinforce his point that you won't know when this is going to be happen when this is going to happen. So be prepared. If you knew when someone was going to come into your house to rob you, you'd be right there and prepared and waiting for that person. This point of all three of the little stories that he uses is be prepared. You don't know. So be prepared. Okay. How do we prepare for the return of the Lord? Well, it's not about watching the skies, really, for omens and portents. We have the opportunity every day, no matter what's going on in the skies, no matter what's going on in the world, to look for evidence of the kingdom of God. Not signs, but evidence, actual um, events that show us that God's kingdom is here among us already. Those are the places we need to be. Those are the places we need to get closer to actual evidence. I walked out of the house this morning and I saw some wet paw prints on my stairs and I knew that meant that the dog had been out. Simple as that. There's nothing spooky or, or, or supernatural about it. It's just a matter of paying attention. And we know specifically <clears throat> where Jesus is. Jesus is any place that healing is taking place. Specifically in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verse 9, as someone is healed, Jesus says, the kingdom is near. So those places where healing is happening are the places where the kingdom is near. And we know from, from all of the stories, we know from Jesus' own um, explanation of his mission that the kingdom is also in the places where the hungry are being fed and the kingdom is also in the places where those who are lost or pushed out are restored we know that Jesus the kingdom is in the all of the places where prisoners are being freed from unjust imprisonment or from all of the other things that can lock us into our own life. So we know where the kingdom is. We, have, we, can, we can put ourselves there in the places where the kingdom is most closely present in the world. And in our own lives, we know what we need to be um, aspiring to. We need to be cultivating the fruit of the Spirit. Do you know all nine of them? If we allow those things to grow in our lives, then we will be ready when the Lord returns. We need to think about those things we talked about a couple of weeks ago, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is excellent, and on and on down the list. When we think about those things, when we act on those things, when we allow the fruit of the Spirit to grow in us, we will be prepared whenever the Lord returns. It's not a secret. There's no indication that Jesus doesn't want us to know what we need to know. He doesn't tell us what we don't need to know, but he tells us everything that we do need to know about being prepared for the arrival of the kingdom with the return of the Son of Man. If we're living a kingdom life now, we will be ready. And then finally, who is it that we expect? The answer is Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior. We know all of those words. Last week, we were reminded that those aren't general words, but they are very specific words. The Lord who will return is the Lord 
our righteousness. The Lord who will return is the one who will restore us to right relationship with God, who will redeem us from our sin, who will save us from the things of this world and allow us to come into the presence of God. That is who will come, the Lord, our righteousness. And finally, Jesus says so very directly in this passage, your Lord is coming. The process is already underway. Amen. Let's take a moment to pray. Lord, we rely on you for our security. And our security doesn't just mean providing the things that we need. Our security means holding us steady and holding us close as our world moves into different times and places, into places that we don't know, into times that we cannot understand. Lord, we trust you because, because we know who you are, because we know you are our righteousness, because we know of your love and your compassion. So even when we don't know exactly what will happen, we know you and you are our connection to the purpose, the kingdom, the reign of God. Help us to keep <clears throat> this understanding fresh in our minds as we look forward or look back to the arrival of the child Jesus in Bethlehem. And help us to keep this clearly and freshly in our minds as we look more deeply into the arrival of your Son and your Spirit in our own lives. In this Advent season, we ask you to move closer to all of us in every way. And together we say, Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Take some time during the music when you have some quiet time, if that happens in this season, to think about what, to, what you look forward to, to think about what you look back on, and to think about where you want Christ to be in your own life. Amen. Mm -hmm.